talk about you know entering this season. Obviously, you know there's that open spot at, at the right guard with the TJ now gone and then retired. Just looking forward to that battle and, and throwing your hat into the mix. Yeah, I mean, in my whole career, I've been put me in anywhere and I'll, I'll go and play, whether it's right guard, whether it's tackle, whether it's center, it's all across the board. Um, but like replacing a guy like TJ is, is hard, especially how good of a player he was and uh, how good he was in our room. Um, so all of us in the room have to step up and be leaders and, and take over what we're missing with TJ. When you went through you know, your first four years to establish yourself and make a, make a team, make a roster, how much of that has been set you up to handle competition at, at any level? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, competition, I mean, the NFL is the NFL for a reason. There's competition at every spot on every roster. I mean, I always go in, um, being an undrafted guy thinking that they're going to replace me because I'm an undrafted guy and I just have to prove myself and, and, um, earn the coach's trust and, and make sure that they can trust me being out there and my teammates can trust me being out there. And that's how I've kind of gone, my, gone about my business throughout my whole entire career is just earning trust from my teammates and the coaching staff and everybody that um, I can be out there, I'm supposed to be out there. I start last year. Just how much of the experience in both the scheme and then the, the chemistry with, with Graham and, and Rick, how much does that help you going into the second season with the Lions? Um, it's, it's huge. I mean, coming in as being a, a free agent guy, coming in the spring, not everybody's already kind of established with their like buddies and all that stuff and just kind of kind of being like the new kid at school again it's 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 kind of difficult um coming in to a place where there's already a bunch of guys already established but um yeah they've been great um uh great golf outings this off season and and fishing trips and stuff so um it's it's going to be good i think Oh, I don't know. I just that's that's a question for Patricia and, and all the coaching staff. But um, um, I hope so. I mean, I wouldn't be here if if I if I didn't want to start. So um, I, I hope so. But honestly, if, wherever they put me, whether it's one of the starting five, six, seven, eight, whatever, I'll do whatever. Surprised? Were you surprised that they wanted you to come up here? Um, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I mean, this is my first time in nine years, like I said. So it's uh, it's pretty cool, I guess. But uh, other than that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not scared of you guys. <laughs> you, you said uh, you go into this mindset every year that they're going to try to replace you. I mean, how, how closely did you pay attention to the draft? I think you probably saw. I mean, I watch the draft every year. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is the first year in the last six years I haven't had a person drafted in my position in the first three rounds. So, um, and I'm still here. So <laughs> there's something to say about that. Is it a sense of I guess if you go through all seven rounds and there's there's no offensive lineman. The um, it's it's I mean kind of it's it's kind of that's that's kind of like maybe a coaching staff or the GM or whatever thinking that they have trust in our group that's maybe it's not just me just our group in general which is which is cool because I think our our group is great and we have a great chemistry great group of guys we work hard and I'm ready I'm really excited about this year. Like you said, you're undrafted, so you always think you're going to get replaced. Is there like a how do you balance like the healthy paranoia versus being motivated to always try to work harder than maybe the next guy does to keep your I've job? been through it all. I've been cut 10 times. I played in the UFL. I've, I've done it all. So nothing surprises me at this point in my career. Um, I know I've, 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 I think I've proven I could play in this league. And um, it's, it's, it's just going out there and just doing what I normally do day in, day out, and being the same person when I walk in the door. What's different about the Devils, Steve, uh, from offensive as opposed to what you played last year? Um, just different terminologies and stuff, um, going to different, just calling things different that they were last year. I mean, you only can do, really do so much on offense and it's kind of putting the base stuff in right now, which is kind of good and just learning and and we haven't really do dove too deep into the into the playbook yet, but um, just kind of, just kind of learning as we go and learning each other and learning the new offense, it's, it's, it's good. Can you put you at the podium at the, in the UFL? No. I was only there for like 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the league folded, so. <laughs> I, got, I only got paid one check out of the two I was supposed to get, so that's cool. So you can empathize with all the people that went through it this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a couple of buddies that were playing in, in the, on the San Diego team that was, uh, that was pretty tough. So what, what were the 10 days like in the UFL? It was it was a uh, it was very eye opening with that. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, we uh, I got there first day. They put us up in the hotel or whatever. And they yeah you got breakfast and lunch 
on us, but you have to do dinner on your own. I'm like, okay, so get on the bus, come, uh, come back to practice, come back from practice. And one of like, our ops guys is standing there with a, a cooler with handing out hot dogs in foil and people are fighting over the ketchup and mustard packets and I'm just like what am I doing like, two hot dogs in one bun that was that was like that was our lunch and I was like okay this is this is this is not football or this is not the NFL let's just say that I was with the Sacramento Mountain Lions at what point in your career were you there my rookie year okay. my, I sat for my rookie camp I was kind of home for about six to eight weeks and then went to play them with them for two weeks and then I got signed on on the Ravens practice squad out of camp? camp? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you remind uh, guys like Ragnow and Decker? Oh yeah, of, that? of course. <laughs> so they don't know the they don't know the struggles. <laughs> I was gonna ask the same thing. Like, what sort of motivation is that for you now? Like, just you know, or maybe to get here? I guess having gone through those moments where you. you um, I mean, I just look back on that time and and because at that time I, I kind of I figured I, I knew I could play. I just had to be at the right spot at the right time. And come in, that was the lockout year, so kind of dating myself. Um, and coming out of college, I didn't do any um, pro days or combines or anything like that. I, I had a shoulder injury. But um, yeah, I mean, just stick with it and keep my head down and keep working. What do you, what do you, what do you attribute mostly to your success of sticking around and forging a career out of nothing almost? Um, just kind of just. I just knowing in the like deep down that I know I could play in this league. I mean, I've had people in my corner, um, guys that helped me when I was younger in my career. Joe Staley was a big big help for me. A um, bunch of my coaches um, early in my career too in the NFL where they knew I could play and always kept in contact with me. So it was kind of like okay, like stay in shape. We're going to try to bring you back and do all that kind of stuff. So trying to always, I never got like totally cut off, and so I kind of knew I was always going to try to stick around especially when I was younger, but yeah, it's just knowing, like, knowing that I could, I could do it. You had a roster at the end of the 2014 season, regular season game. Is there anything memorable about that for you? Um, it, was my first, it was my first time getting a, a snap. That was um, Chiefs on field goal. But yeah, I didn't play on offense until year five in, in the league, which uh, that was my first offensive snap week three after I got cut out of camp that year too. So that was pretty... Uh, Pretty crazy. So after the uh, after the, the UFL, like, what was the path? How'd you get to the NFL? When did that well, I went back to the practice squad. Uh, I went to the Ravens practice squad. They uh, didn't sign me back to a futures deal, and then the, the San Francisco signed me to the to a futures deal. At a, so I had the whole off season with them. Uh, was practice squad that whole year. Went to the Super Bowl. Lost to the Ravens. Um, not one offensive lineman got hurt. I was a swing tackle basically. Um, and I was taking reps with the ones all year, like when the guys needed breaks. And our, I mean, our backup tackle was our starting right guard. So if any of those three guys got hurt, I was getting pulled up, like for sure. And none of them got hurt. And then kind of just fought along, went to the Chargers practice squad up and down a couple times. Um, and then kind of just stuck on there for the last three years or three years ago or two years ago. Oh, so grateful, man, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, but uh, no, uh, it's, it's, it's how it should be, yeah. Yeah, I see you like fishing. Uh, what's the biggest fish you ever caught? Um, actually, I, did ju I just caught a four-pound bass with, with Frank the other day, so that was pretty fun. When was the last time you were actually at the boat? Do you even know? Could Never. It's my first time. Ever? I mean, if I'm not talking to the media. I was talking to, I talked to, like, Kids at his high school or something, but not like, not you guys. Be kind of highlighting your career, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> you guys are the highlight. <laughs>